After we've launched and renamed our notebook, there are a few specific parts of the notebook we should become acquainted with. The first is the cell type, which can be switched using the dropdown. For the most part, we will be using code, which again will be in Python because that's the type of notebook we selected. The other useful cell type is Markdown, which enables us to add documentation and context to our code blocks and notebooks. Markdown allows lightweight text for headers or more text for our notebooks. It basically is the preferred cell type for everything outside of code as it helps with descriptions and classes. We would also use it for embedding image files or formatting bulleted lists. Now notice when I select the code cell, it has the code marking. Whereas if I select a markdown cell, it has the markdown. If I were to run this, we see that it runs as code. Whereas if I change it to markdown and I ran it, it would just come as plain text. The cell is just a container for the text to be displayed within our notebook, which we will execute with the kernel. You may see markdown in GitHub and a lot of other places around the web. You can add headings by starting a line with one or multiple hashtags, followed by a space like in the following example. You'll see that the heading sizes will vary. And again, within the code blocks, we can still add documentation by starting with the hashtag. And if we run this, it will still run the code and not pay attention to the text that we added. Other than the cell type, the kernel is the other important thing to know in the Jupyter Notebook. The kernel refers to the server that is currently running and will be our safety net if anything goes wrong. The kernel is basically the engine that runs the code in our notebook, which in this case is Python 3. We can always restart the kernel if we are stuck in a for loop or run into any other error, as a restart dumps the memory so we get a start fresh. Generally when I restart the kernel, I like to restart it and clear the output. This helps to keep things tidy. What's interesting about the kernel is that the state remains stable between cells, which means we can run them out of order if we want. This means once we run a cell with a function in it, we can use that function whether or not the cell is above or below the initial function cell. The same holds true for variables. So here, if we had x equals 1 plus 1, and we go ahead and add a cell and print x, we should see 2. Now, if we went up here and said x equals 1 plus 2, and now we print x, even though it's above it, it still is going to update and equal 3. This allows us to go back and make updates and change our code without needing to start over entirely, and will come in handy numerous times. Remember from the previous lesson that closing the notebook by exiting out of the tab will not actually close the notebook officially. The notebook's kernel will run in the background and we either need to shut it down through the interface or close out of Jupyter entirely in the terminal. One last thing. Regarding the kernel, ours is running on Python 3, but just know that you can run on many other languages within the Jupyter notebook. Let's shut this down. And here again, it went from green to the gray. And we could see when it was last modified. Great, let's get into executing the code within the cells in our next section.